Hey everybody, Mike Copero with podcastcondition.com bringing you episode 117 after two weeks off. Uh, <laughs> joining you back, it's 2016 for our second episode of the year, I think, right? Did we did we do one earlier in the month or is this our first of the year? Uh, I think we did one other. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's February. We've got to have done one other. Oh, yeah, it is February. I keep forgetting. I never know what day it is anymore. <laughs> you have a baby. That's to be understood. And work is just brutal. Uh, so, <clears throat> so what's up, Dan? How you doing? I am better, I guess, would be the best way of putting it. It's been kind of a rough couple of weeks, yeah. um, but things are getting better. So <clears throat> It's good to hear. Um I remember the last episode. Yeah, it was. We did do a show last month because uh, we signed off, and I was like, "Crap, I didn't even get to ask Dan to talk about his uh, his trip to California." <laughs> so you oh, didn't. Oh God! I know that uh, <laughs> it seems like a while away, but uh, it is feeling that way now. That's like two colds that. ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, last time we spun the wheel on the show that we did, uh, we landed on beer you can't pronounce uh so did you uh did you find something that you can't pronounce or just something with a weird name at all um i did actually this is kind of interesting because i wasn't expecting it i was i was at the store today looking for the beer that i just couldn't read the label right away and being like okay that's the one so i came across this and it's called sort milk or something like that and then it's there's Mike. How you hey, doing? Up, Mike? Hey. Greetings from Seattle. Look at you all. Oh. You didn't have to dress up for the show, man. Come on. I know. I thought this was a formal. I thought this was a formal occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> so, so how's uh, Seattle? Uh, oh, just I'm sorry. Good. Good. Actually, I just came from a brewery. Um, on my walk back from the conference that I was attending today, there was a brewery that. I haven't even had a chance to look them up, but I know that when I did some research the last time I was out here, back in July, I don't think they existed because I couldn't, there was nothing about a cloudburst uh, brewery uh, when I was doing a research last time I was out here, but yeah. uh, I saw this the other day when I was walking by, I'm like, oh, like I'm, I'm definitely going to stop in, so on my walk back to the hotel, um, I stopped by, had a beer there, it was delicious, and now here I am, signing in, it's only... It's only six o'clock, which is nice. Nice change from the usual nine o'clock when I join. <laughs> yeah, right. That's nice. Uh, <laughs> did you bring anything back from like a, in a growler or anything like that? No, so I didn't. I didn't get a growler. Um, I actually, I didn't. I didn't know that I was going to find that brewery. So uh, two days ago, I I just got something local. I look was looking for something local and something that I also could not pronounce at the same time, and I couldn't. I couldn't do both. So I opted for something local that I didn't get. Um, back east when I'm when I'm there, it looks like Dan Dan just dropped off. Yeah, he um, he put up he put in the chat that he he cut out. His mic doesn't agree with our our uh, hangouts every gotcha. once in a while. So I have a Snoqualmie uh, Brewing Company Avalanche, Ooh. which is their uh, seasonal. Um, and I have never even heard so of what's uh, the brewery name again. Snoqualmie Handcrafted Ales, Snoqualmie Falls Brewing Company. It's like the the brewery name at least fits the style of our show tonight. <laughs> it's um, it's uh, it is from uh, Snoqualmie, Washington, which is uh, there are a few ski ski areas in that in that area. So gotcha. Um, very appropriate that they have a uh, seasonal uh, winter ale that is called Avalanche. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty good. I, the winter ale style is not, it's not really one of my favorites. I just yeah. find them to kind of, they, they just, I don't know. They don't have a lot of flavor. Usually they're, they're heavy on malt and not a lot of hops, which is not to my liking. Um, this one, this one is, is typical of the of winter ale style in that sense that it's, you know, malty and, um, not not a ton of hop flavor in there and it's, so it's not my favorite style but uh i think this beer itself is a is a relatively good representation of the style it's got um <laughs> let me i i read the 
it's got a number of you know northwest hops that they are uh, touting in the in the description. But I get like I get some more like nutty flavors. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it's it's not so much the nutmeg and like the cloves, which I feel like you get a lot of with the the winter ales. This one actually has like nuts. Like I taste like. I don't know, pecans or almonds or like hmm. some like nutty flavor, which is which is kind of which is different, and I and I appreciate it. So it's a good good beer for for tonight here. Oh, yeah. it's good. It's it's darker. It's uh, almost it's almost red. It's got kind of like a red ale like look to it. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely not bad. I uh, you know as I walked in the hotel tonight, I. I bugged the bartender in the ho in the lobby bar for a pint glass and a bottle opener. <laughs> <laughs> to his That's credit, awesome. to, to his credit, he had them ready though. So <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um so did you did you have to go far for that beer or is there a bottle shop near where you're staying at or how'd you get that? So I'm so I'm staying in Seattle um because the conference that I that I went to today is in Seattle. Um and also because I was going to be here for, for almost a week. So I figured it made sense to stay here rather than somewhere out near Maple Valley, which is where our actual office, uh, Cobaris's office out here is located in Maple Valley, mm -hmm. which is about 45 minute drive Southeast of Seattle. Um, and so normally, like if you were just going to the office, you'd probably either stay at the airport, which is like a half hour drive. Um, but because I had the conference and because I was going to be here for a few days, I stayed in the city, which is, a lot more to do, a lot more going on than just sitting at the airport for a couple of days. Um, so actually, I just bought this at a uh, grocery store that was uh, near the office out in Maple Valley, which um, it's uh, it's called Fred Meyer. I don't know if you guys have those out in Chicago or not. I don't, but I that name sounds familiar for some reason. So it's, I mean, it's a chain, and it's <clears throat> it, what I I would describe it as like an upscale Walmart. Like it's got a lot more than like a Target would have. Like it's got, it's got everything. It's huge. It's got a, it's like a liquor store, grocery store, clothing store, like all in one. So it's like a Target or a Walmart in that sense. But but it's more upscale. Upscale like the the deli and like the the supermarket has got like some good stuff. The um, the liquor store portion of it had some like a good selection of local beers. Like I was, I was pretty impressed. Like there was one side of the aisle was all like the mass produced, like Bud, your Bud Lights of the world. The other side of the aisle, which are long aisles, uh, was all like, you know, Oregon, Washington, California beer. So it was, awesome. it wasn't bad. Yeah. Yeah. Can so you good, uh, Have you had much, uh, much beer from Ninkasi before? No, although I saw I saw some and I I did not pick it up. But no, their IPA I don't think is I really it. their IPA is really solid. I love that beer. Mm. Um, so what are you drinking, Dan? You're back. Welcome back, by the way. I am, and if I cut out again, I'm going to try to switch over to the phone into that app because the computer's obviously mm -hmm. having one of those nights. Um, but I got something. Uh, what did I get? It was a uh, sort milk. Duden or and I can't even pronounce it, which is the point. Well, that's <laughs> yeah, perfect. But this is an interesting beer because I was reading the back of it and I was trying to figure out where it was coming from, and I noticed that it was brewed and bottled by Toe Ole at Brewdog Ellen, Scotland. Hmm. So this was contract oh. brewed at uh, Brewdogs oh. out in uh, Scotland. That's cool. Which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and what it is, it is an imperial milk stout that's been barrel aged in a is it Scotch barrels? Let me look at this again. Um, I where did it go? There we go. Yeah, it's an imperial milk stout aged in Scotch oak barrels, and um, it's tasty. It's definitely more on the sort of like the burnt malts end of things in turn uh, with the the malt flavors, and there's got some uh, sweetness in there from the uh, the lactose, but it's um it's a nice beer. I kind of wish I had gotten a second one, but I guess I could get a second one and uh, aged out because I think that would kind of smooth it out a little bit. But it's good. <clears throat> nice. Yeah, I went um I went the McKellar route. Um, just one for one reason. I I haven't had much from them in a long time actually. And, um, 
I've seen a lot of their their um, like six packs or their four packs of stuff, and I was they even do cans now. Um, I've seen, but I I opted for one of these uh, green glass bottles. Oh, yeah. um, this is one of their so it looks like they had this in a series. Uh, it's called Spontan. Uh, it's a series. They all started with Spontan something. So this one is Spontan. I love, I love that we're doing beers you can't pronounce. It makes for a really interesting show. <laughs> <laughs> trying, everyone's trying to talk about like what what beers they have, and no one. <laughs> so this one's called Spontan Sea Buckthorn, and oh, I like uh, it. so it's a sour ale. Uh, it's brewed with sea buckthorn, which I don't know what it is. I just tried looking it up, and it looks like it's some sort of a berry. Um. Well, buckthorn is a uh, yeah. That sounds like a berry. Um, sea buckthorn, uh, and it's also aged in uh, oak barrels too. It is mighty tasty. It's very tart, and it's like crazy how it like. Even after I've finished uh, drinking the one sip that I've had in my mouth, it like coats your mouth with all sorts of tart um, flavor that just kind of keeps. It kind of keeps attacking your mouth for a while mm-hmm. until you uh, maybe have like ten or twenty seconds to let your mouth like kind of re uh, readjust. But it's it you can smell the oak. It's really good. Um, mm. I don't know. It's 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 really pretty too. It's nice and cloudy, but it's super orange. It's actually pretty yeah. well uh, represented on the camera as far as I can see on my end here. But it's it's super cloudy, but yeah. Um, it's also because I just kind of dump the very bottom into it too, but um, I yeah. always do that. It looks um, good. It it really is. I I'm I'm uh, pretty impressed. Like I said, I don't I don't have much from them usually, but uh, I can't even read what the ingredients are on here because because it's McKellar. Um. Yeah, it's all in uh, it's, it's Belgium, so. Uh, I, would love, I would love to visit their uh, their location. They they do a lot of didn't they they opened something with three Floyds out there, didn't they? Yeah, it's a brew pub called War Pigs. Yeah, that's it. Uh, God, what is what, what city is that in? That's in um, I think it's in the Netherlands somewhere. Is it somewhere? Yeah, I um, I used to know. I off the top of my head, I don't remember. Yeah. No, I, I'm a couple of beers in already, so my memory is. Man, this is tart. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it. Uh, I don't know if I can have anything after this because it's very. Just takes. Oh, it's, a, I'm sorry, it's Amsterdam. I think. I think. Mm. Does that sound right? What's it called again? Uh, War Pigs. I think it's in Amsterdam. Uh, let's see. Damn it, Jim! I was an English major, not a geography major. <laughs> Pigs brew pub. Copenhagen. Hmm. Oh. All right. So I was in Europe at least. <laughs> Yay! I, I mean, they're always posting pictures from their location out there uh, in their Instagram uh, account, but uh, man, they have a very interesting website. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it sounds about right. But uh, yeah, so there's been some decent stuff happen. So you were you were in San Francisco. We were mentioning that you hadn't really talked about your trip out there. Um, our last episode. So do you did you visit many breweries? Did you have any good beers? Anything to to report as far as your trip there? Um, Where were you there? I did. Uh, it was Christmas, so I was there for Christmas Day, a little before a, a touch after. Um, and actually, it's kind of funny that you're reporting from uh, the, the Pacific Northwest now because last weekend I was in Boston oh, for a no funeral. Kidding. No, I kid you not. I, Friday I came in. We uh, came back on Monday, and it was a funeral uh, oh. up in uh, Gloucester. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, California seems a long time ago now. <laughs> and, and and real and virtual or at least mental time it has been it's like a world away, 
we were actually not in San Francisco as much. We were more in the Sacramento Valley and uh, Sacramento, the city of Sacramento specifically. And um, I would say the highlight was probably going to Track 7 Brewing in Sacramento. It's a great brewery. Uh, highly recommend it. It was funny because I had a weird sense of deja vu walking into it. Um, and it's a lot like Strange Brewing in Colorado, uh, in Denver. Um, it's the same sort of setup where it's in this industrial area. The interesting thing about Track 7 is that it's near train tracks, of course, but it's also got like these, it's almost like airplane hangry buildings that are kind of, you know, in the area. It's almost like they were building airplanes in this particular section of town at some point. Um, but they're one of the converted industrial buildings. They have a tap room on one side, there's a wall, and you go on the other side, and there's just probably a machine shop at some time, and there's, there's seating there. Uh, and uh, their, their barrel aging area. And I had uh, one of the better IPAs that I've had in my lifetime, Panic, I believe is the name of it, Panic IPA. And um, uh, I was a little sad that we weren't there a little later, if that makes sense, because they had these barrel aged beers sitting around, and obviously they were going to pop up at some point. And there was a portion of them that were definitely bourbon barrel aged, and some that were going the sour route. So they were, they were, putting their fingers in a little bit of everything, but for what I was tasting, they had the skill to pull it off. Uh, it's great stuff. And it sounds like they've expanded recently, like within the last year or so. So they are producing plenty of beer. Hopefully it gets out here. If it does, look for it. I highly recommend it. Um, another part of the trip, we went up to a gold mine uh, in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada and hit a, a town called, uh, what was it, Grass Valley. I saw it was the Empire Gold Mine, but there was a uh, beer bar there where we got our other little taste of Sacramento, or at least I did, in the form of Rubicon Brewing, uh, which is, a, I think, the oldest brewing facility in Sacramento at present, or at least continuously running. Uh, and I had their uh, Monkey Knife Fight Pale Ale, which is a reliably tasty and well-named beer. <laughs> I know, I love that name. <laughs> yeah, you can't not like that name. Um and uh, we had it at a pizza joint there. I forget the name of the pizza joint, but I really wish I had it on the tip of my tongue because it was a, it was a great location right in downtown Grass Valley. Um, if you're ever out there, go there. I mean, it's just uh, a beautiful scenery. I mean, you, you can't beat the foothills of the Sierra Nevada for vistas. You know, it's kind of like being in the desert southwest and looking at, um, um, you know, the... The uh, you know the Arizona landscape when you're when you're near the uh, um, oh what are those flattened um, sort of uh, oh shoot I'm forgetting the landform is anyway it's been a long time I was in second grade when I saw these so I can't explain them very well anyway but <laughs> needless to say it's really nice viewing uh, San Francisco is its own nice viewing we got to see a little bit of that but not as much um, but I kind of babbled for a while so I'll stop there nice a um, good trip. Yeah. yeah, that was a good trip. Yeah. What yeah, are you doing? Like, uh, unfortunately, your your Boston trip sounds like it wasn't under the best circumstances. But uh, did you did you take advantage of being there and get to get to try anything, or was it just a quick quick trip? No, uh, it was a well, it was a, I mean, it was actually a surprisingly long trip considering we came in on um, uh, did we come in on Thursday night or Friday? Uh, no, that's right. We left really early Friday morning because I had, had like a 2.30 wake-up call in Chicago, a.m. Not a good day. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we Did flew you have to in. change any diapers or do anything like that? Why are you up so early? <laughs> oh, because we got a 6 a.m. flight. No, I know. I'm kidding. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, yeah I met, it would have been better if I were changing diapers. <laughs> I would have felt more justified. <laughs> <laughs> that's brutal. But, you know, it brings you right back. That's how you got those muscles, you know. You just flex them again and you're good. No, um, so we, we flew out on Friday. The the funeral and the visiting with family, which was great. Um, I mean, it was horrible, but also great you know, to, to be there with everybody. Um, didn't leave us a lot of time for other stuff, but we did get into Salem. I got back to quality liquor in Salem, and... 
I had that there was more of the beer that I got there when we were in spring visiting the, the same really? relative who'd actually recently passed away. So it was it was a weird sort of circular <laughs> motion to it all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it was it was um oh what is it Jack's Abbey's uh, barrel aged Baltic Porter awesome mm -hmm. long long hammer is that it uh, framing hammer framing hammer that might be it yeah um and uh, there were two Mystic beers that I picked up one was their uh, was an old Powderhouse barley wine and I think I got one from like 2014 because. You should go there, Mike, because yeah. <laughs> it's one of those places that a lot of people don't know about. I don't think. And so it sounds like. And they've been, yeah. The beers are sort of self-cellaring, in yeah. a way, weird way. So, but I got two Mystic Brewing beers. So Mystic's uh, Old Powder House was one of them, and then uh, the Something of Doom. It was like the uh, the name of Doom or the the oh, day yeah. of Doom. That's it, Day yeah. of Doom. I think it is. Yep. Which is their uh, Belgian quad. So I'll be curious to crack those open. Um, awesome. That, yeah, and I got to drink some beer while I was out there, but really that was, I kind of decided, you know what, I'll pack these up and because we happen Good. to be here and bring them home, and that'll be that back part. Good. Good, good. Um, I don't know if, uh, I, I'm not sure, if, I don't think you were on when I said what beer I have. I actually have a, no, I, I couldn't could find it. A beer that that I couldn't pronounce. Uh, I was looking for one that I couldn't pronounce, and that was local uh, out here in Seattle. And I couldn't find one that that met both criteria, so I opted for uh, local. And I have your, okay, uh, no Qualmy Avalanche Winter Ale. It's, uh, yeah, no, it's no Qualmy Brewing Company's uh, seasonal. Okay, which is, which is good. It's a good good representation of the winter ale. Um, not my favorite style, but this is this is pretty good. It's got like a like a nutty flavor to it, which I think is kind of unique. It gets a little a little bit away from the usual nutmeg and cloves that I feel like find their way into all the winter ales. This one's got a little little different take on it, which is which is nice. That does sound nice. What's it like out there uh, this time of year in Seattle? So it's very different from when I was out here in July. In July. I feel like that's that's the kind of weather I was meant to live in. Like it was, you know, mid 70s during the day, maybe gets up to 80, uh, but it's but it's relatively dry given how close it is to the. I mean, it's on the ocean, so but but it's you know not incredibly humid. Um, it's just it, it's beautiful, sunny, uh, clear days all the time. Like it was it was fantastic. Uh, now, we actually got some sun yesterday, but that everyone kept talking about, like, oh, man, like, I really need my sunglasses today, and like, it was the, the most unusual thing <laughs> to see the sun in, in February, um, and today, I think, is more typical of how it normally is, which is cloudy and raining and not necessarily downpours, like, I didn't get caught in any, like, you know, I didn't get soaked. I did a fair amount of walking today because I walked to the conference I was at, which is just under a mile, and I walked, kind of meandered my way back here, which is, you know, just under a mile. So I walked, you know, about two miles today outside. I didn't get soaked. It was just kind of a light rain, just gently falling, just cloudy and cool and, uh, you know, mid-40s, which is, you know, would feel warm for me uh, coming from Boston yeah, right? this time of year. <laughs> If if not for the fact that it was almost sixty degrees in Boston yesterday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, when we left on Monday from uh, from uh, Gloucester, it was in the fifties. You're yeah. like, oh damn. <laughs> I know, I know. So normally this would be very refreshing, but instead it just kind of feels like it's a few degrees warmer and uh, and rainy. Um, but even even in the rain, like you know, I was telling my wife last night, like she's never been out here before, and I was telling her like we gotta. You got to get out here. Like we got to come here together because this is—it's a, just a beautiful city. It's—it's it's fantastic. Nice. Yeah, I've always wanted to go to Seattle because um, I've been to Portland, and you know it's like a three-hour drive I think up up north to Seattle from there. And <clears throat> some friends of mine um, went and visited there while we were all in Portland. But uh, that's always been a place I've wanted to check out. So. You're experiencing experiencing the weather that inspired uh, Jimi Hendrix and Nirvana and Pearl Jam and Kurt Cobain. 
Oh, that's right. So let's go over him to it. kill himself. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Unless you watch the documentary that kind of leans towards Courtney Love being the one who did it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I can believe that too. <laughs> <laughs> looks like Curse is back. Um, while he's kind of getting all set up and ready to, because it looks like he's on mute. But uh, a little yeah, bit. Can hear you, Chris. With a, he, it's good. <laughs> I'm mute. I'm not on mute. I am not. <laughs> exactly. I am not a mute. <laughs> What's up, man? How you been? Good. How are you guys? Good. You get you and Mike, man. Why you guys get all dressed up for this evening? I just came from a meet and greet with the uh, Fuhrer and the Germans from uh, trying to class from this up. Motherland. Hey, I resemble that remark. <laughs> I was yeah I was with the uh, the Germans were over to visit the plant this week so I had to go out and uh, rub elbows oh. with them and drink some beers show them what a true a beer is by drinking a plead the fifth uh, imperial stout by Dark Horse while they were like whoa that's dark we only drink light beers in German German <laughs> that's not so have you never had of a Marzen you're like what with you like, what's in this <laughs> this is not the Reinheitsgebot you guys yeah. use other adjuncts in here <laughs> that's, that's right, right. <laughs> um, cool man. Uh, thanks for joining. We got some some pretty good beers going on right now. What do you got there? I'm hoping nobody has this. It was hard to find a beer that you can't pronounce, but I went with uh, Bira et Trua Ska by Dark or, uh, by uh, Shed. Yeah. Oh, guys, there you go. Guys, guys ever okay. seen this? Yeah, I've seen yeah, that. I, I can't pronounce I didn't it. Pick it up, but what is yeah. it? Is that the the one he did? With, it looks Italian, right? An ancient ale brewed with honey, hazelnut flour, uh, heirloom wheat. Uh, what else is on here? Mir, M M Y R R H. Meyer. Gentian root. Mir. Gentian root. Raisins, pomegranate juice, and pomegranates. And shame. And potpourri. <laughs> and some some yeast from someone's beard. It smells like <laughs> yeah, no, shit. It smells like it smells like wine. I'm thinking armpit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it it smells like wine. It tastes like um. It tastes like hippie sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Probably You're drinking patchouli. <laughs> it tastes like it's got some patchouli in there. It tastes like it's got some you know some uh, uh stage two at Lollapalooza. You know something like that. So. Oh man. <laughs> it's definitely a great beer for sure. So, so what you're saying is this should have been named Dinosaur Junior. Oh, yes, good. exactly. <laughs> good call. Yeah. Sounds Lane's... like a beer that's very representative of the beers you cannot pronounce style. <laughs> yeah, it's Bira. It Bira. It True Ska. Yeah. Bronze. Right. Bronze. Oh, oh, wait a minute. That Okay, Etruska. That's probably like Etruscan. Yeah. Oh, and what's that mean for us uh, uh, uneducated? For, like a tribe in Mediterranean somewhere, like ancient times Greek, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I can see that. I think Bira is beer in Italian. Yeah, so that, well, they're on the med. Because I think I've seen that at, at Ely, because they, you know, they're half ownership of that, or they're somehow involved with Italy uh, in New York and in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And, oh, that uh, sounds right. That's so cool. they teamed up with Biera Brother Brewers and that stupid archaeologist that always hooks up with them, Dr. Patrick McGovern. Um, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> he, created, he created ancient ale. He's a paid shill. <laughs> he's, a, he's just looking for another buck. That's um, great. <laughs> they did. Uh, they did some research on a pilgrimage. What we made a research pilgrimage together so, to early Etrus Etruscan warrior mm -hmm. tombs. Etruscan. Etruscan in the hills. Uh, I'm trying to read this, but the font is like blurred together. Either I'm drunk already. In the hills and along the coast of Tuscany. So, oh, okay. Etruscan, Tuscany. Okay, I can yeah. see that. The 8th century B.C. recipe is based on chemical and botanical evidence of tree resins, beeswax, and honey, whole pomegranates, hazelnuts, grapes, and apples found inside ancient jars and drinking drinking bowls. Uh, it represents a prehistoric mixed beverage of Italy, 
there you go. There's the Italy part. Yeah, obviously. Right, yeah. Uh, before arrival of wine, our version is fermented with bronze, a popular material in brewing and cooling in the Etruscan era. Also, you know, if they, if they were really brave, I think they would brew a beer based on the stomach contents of a mammoth. <laughs> that would be bravery. That I, I, or the guy that has frozen the gauntlet frozen is frozen out of the Alps. Alps. We exactly. have we have scraped the yeast off the penis of a m- mammoth, <laughs> and we are going to brew a beer with it now. And now we are extracting the yeast. Oh Jesus! It's called true ivory. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Nice. So um, now that we got Michigan represented, uh, we got we got to talk about uh, news on. Yeah, shorts, man. They uh, they broke their their vow of uh, I don't know celibacy. Yeah, I don't know. They're, <laughs> they're... They are breaking their uh, promise to the state of Michigan that they will never ever ship beer outside of that state. Um, yeah, they, they, in order to, uh, continue growth, um, they, you know, the, the state of Michigan's got so many breweries popping up there that they decided to, uh, to sustain the growth that they've got going on. They're going to start shipping beers to Illinois and Pennsylvania. Uh, they haven't announced who they're, they're, uh, distributing in Illinois with. I would assume it's Windy City. I, because I talked to my Benny's guy and he, he was mentioning a different distributor, and they were like, "Yeah, I, I've never, uh, haven't heard anything about it yet." So, um, so I don't know. I'm excited, but it, it sounds like we're only getting a few of the flagships for the for the first. Uh, I don't know for the first initial shipments. Um, I guess as early as March, they're talking about. Yep. Yeah, they said yeah, and maybe March or even I thought it was February even maybe, which is they, yeah. They, it said March or possibly sooner. They didn't really specify. So we'll be getting Humalupalicious, the uh, Space Rock, which I'm excited about because that's one of my new favorites. Mm-hmm. And what was the other one? Uh, what's the fruity one? Uh, oh, uh, uh, pr- uh, Parade, 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 Parade. Yeah. Parade. yeah, yeah. Uh, Soft. Soft Soft parade. Yeah. I was like, I know it's a Doors Doors album or I I will tell you what, I am hooked on Juicy Tree right now. Juicy Tree is freaking I love Juicy Tree. So I'm not a fan of that one. I like almost every you know what though, I I wanna revisit it because it's been probably two years since I've had it. So I would totally I'm I'm going to Bel Air next month. Um but I don't know if they'll they probably won't have that one by then, but uh the um, if you're not a gin fan, it's supposedly what I've been told. I do not like gin, or at least when I've had it in like decades past that I somebody would hand me a drink made with gin, I'd be like, oh, dude, this is nasty. People have said juicy tree tastes like gin. Then I'm like, I guess I'm a gin fan now because I like that <laughs> spruciness, and it just it just tastes really unique. I don't know, it's weird. Yeah, it's it like the Irish in you was like, oh, it tastes like an effing tree. Effing <laughs> <laughs> tree. <laughs> E-F-F-N. <laughs> but yeah, it's exciting. Uh, I don't know how much more they're going to expand eventually, but uh, Illinois is a good market. I I know that a lot of people who travel uh, from Chicago to Shorts that uh, that will be very excited. So it's kind of cool. Um you're what are your happy thoughts about on this it? news, or are you uh, are you a, a little unhappy that it's uh, that they're growing, you know, well, to the extent that they're shipping yeah. outside of Michigan? Now? It's, it's yeah. probably it's probably difference here. Uh, Mike's probably glad because now he doesn't have to work as hard to get some of the normal beers. I'm I'm kinda, yeah, I'm kind of like I liked his spirit. I mean, his one of his mottos was, "We're not in the the something along the lines of um, we're not in the business of." exporting our beer. We're in the business of importing Import tourists, people. people to drink our beer into Michigan, because Michigan was hurting so bad with the auto industry and stuff, so I thought that was cool, but I kind of understand his point of view, and that he's he's at that point where he's got beers sitting on the shelf now, probably not moving as quickly as it used to, because there's so many breweries. I think we, the last total I just saw the other day was 159 breweries now in Michigan. Yeah. So, I mean, we're knocking on, I think, whoever number three is, maybe Oregon. <laughs> 
maybe not Oregon, uh, Colorado maybe, I think, or something like that. So I, I see what he's doing. I just hope he doesn't overdo it and get in the crosshairs of, like, AB InBev or something like that because he's – he's I've always called them the dogfish head of Michigan. I mean, they don't do any of these – these wacky ancient beers this type stuff, but they, they do make some eclectic beers that you're kind of like, wow, this is, you know, they have strawberry shorts cake, they have uh, carrot cake, they have key lime pie, pie. Yeah. they have the juicy tree, which is made with spruce tips, they have spruce pilsner, which is made with spruce tips. I mean, all those beers, you know, the person that hasn't had a lot of those is like, all these sound like garbage, but you have one and you're like, holy shit, this is actually... A really interesting beer. It's not like it's not all about the. You could sit and drink a six pack. They're not yep. candy, candy like flavored, too sweet. You know. No, I mean the, that key lime pie. I'm not like you let that warm up enough, and and I've said this a thousand times, but you can literally taste like the cinnamon and the crust of the of the key lime pie. It's mm-hmm. like it's ridiculous how that beer is like spot on, and it's not. Like you said, it's not too sweet and, and desserty kind of, of of a beer. Even the strawberry shorts cake is as sweet as that can be. I can sit there with at least two of them and and not feel you know like I'm overdone right. with with sweetness or anything like that. Right. Well, I, that's a weird thing though because I had the key lime pie when I was at uh, the Great Taste of the Midwest and. I mean, it was a, it was an okay beer, but I wasn't going back to it. You gotta let it warm up. Buddy. Well, and no, I have, I, it was a summer day. It was pretty. Warm. I would I would say this: all those beers are all none of them are beers that where you're like, wow, this is just over the top. But right, you've got to have that. You've got to have that desire or that palate to actually want to go back and revisit it. You know, you got to have a mm-hmm. like what Mike's talking about experience where it's warmed up. I'm not a big fan of the key lime. I, in other words, if I see it on the shelves, I usually won't get it unless I want a beer share with somebody and blow their kind of mind with, with something like that. Um, right. Strawberry shorts cakes, the same thing. Carrot cakes, same thing. I, I probably won't go and get those. Is there another one that's like? So then they like the barrel aged shorts cake. Yeah, there's a barrel aged one they usually come out with. Oh, the uh, beer. the carrot carrot cake. That was it. There's like a strawberries and cream or something like that as well or something like that. I don't yeah, remember. I know what you're talking about. Um, Cookies and cream, something like that. It's wacky. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, and, and they do a lot of IPAs because it's you know Joe's favorite style of beer. But they do good variations of them uh, along with pale ales. Uh, but I, I'm a big fan of the Evil Urges. That's always a good one. I, I'm also. I think that's like one of my favorite browns too. The Bel Air Brown is is solid as hell. They're, oh, that is you, a solid brown. They yeah. made their peanut butter and jelly the one year. They oh, made it. Yeah, so that's, that's the Uber Goober and the Soft Parade mixed. And I'll tell you what, I have never tasted. I mean, there are tons of peanut butter beers out there, but this one is. It, it's almost like you're you're drinking a beer as you're chewing a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You're like. There's the strawberry or the jam. There's the peanut butter. It's just yeah. weird. It's like this nice. perfect balance. Cup of Joe's great. Uh, there was a s'mores beer that they did. Yeah. I think I told you about that, where they actually lit up a marshmallow on a stick and put it in my glass at the pub. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to go back. I haven't been there since they busted the wall down and expanded uh, the the extra. Spot. So I mean, go over to when you walk in. So walk in and immediately turn left as you walk in and go right over to the other side. You know, I my suggestion is don't spend your time over on the old side because you've been there. Go over and experience the pub. They should have it open depending on what day you're there. If you're there on a weekend, I no, you're, you're sure. not talking about the the spot with the stage because that was already part of the. It is, but on all the way on the opposite end of the building, up against the street, there's a there's a bar there. Oh yeah, that's been there for that's been like that for a couple of years now. But they okay. they they but bought the the, the store next that. To it. Yeah, and that's just like a room. That's like a almost like a private room almost. Oh, okay. So you'd be lucky to get in. I don't know. You might be able to sit down in there, but I'd spend your time over on that side. Maybe try to get in that room when it when it frees up because it's not real. I don't think it's real big, if I remember right. But it's uh, yeah, it's right on the street with a big window, so you can look out and watch the people stumbling by and stuff. Well, they're supposed hmm. to have outdoor seating um, with this this new building too. Um, oh, really? Maybe on yeah. the sidewalk? Uh, I don't know if it's there or if it's in the back. It's going to be in the back or what? Um, I remember hearing about that on one of their podcasts because uh, they got the short smart now too. That's that's going to be like I that's think way like, down. That's like down at the end of this block almost. Really? I thought it was like two doors down. I I, I thought well, it was I like, mean it, we're talking about Bel Air, dude. 
We're not talking about Detroit. So when I say no. it's down the end of the block, it's two you doors can, down. You can run down. You can run down the downtown area in like ten seconds. I get yeah, it. Yeah, it's no, it's yeah. You're right. It's like two doors down. It's like down farther than uh, that last that new expansion they made. So yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm uh, looking forward to the trip. It's been I didn't get to go at all last year, so we're gonna. Bring the baby for her first trip to Bel Air. You staying at that? Ho- are you staying at the hotel? The inn? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. Already got my. I just booked the room today. Nice. So uh, yeah, excited about that. Um, Dan, we didn't also didn't talk about your uh, your pub crawl that you did. Uh, what last month? It was oh, like a Jesus. That's pub right. Pub. <laughs> Holy shit! I've been doing a lot. Um, yeah, that was the club. Um. We went to downtown Chicago. Um, actually, before we move on to just kind of hit one last Michigan note, I was just going to mention the uh, the the uh, Michigan uh, Brewers Guild Winter Festival uh, in uh, Grand Rapids, and I actually did just book my hopper ticket, which means that I've committed to going to Grand Rapids for that. So I'm coming your way, Chris. Yeah, I, I just texted my buddy and said my ticket's gone. I sold it, and he's like, "Who's going?" I go, "One of the Chic- you guys are known as the Chicago guys." So I'm like, "One of the Chicago guys." <laughs> One of those guys. You just oh, going by work. yourself, Dan? What's that? Are you just going by yourself? Or are you bringing uh, bringing anyone? No, I'm going solo. Nice. So I'll no, and I, it's going to be a quick trip because there's another uh, homebrew club thing that's going on that I'm coming back to. Um, but the one that you were talking about was two weeks ago, I want to say. Mm, no, maybe it was three weeks ago now. And um, that was the uh, beer bus. We basically, uh, I'm part of the Babel Homebrew Club here in Lake County, Illinois, and uh, one of our quarterly activities was to book a bus uh, through a livery company to drive us around Chicago to hit various breweries. So we started at Haymarket, which is a is a really... A, it was probably one of the best stops, if not the best stop, um, on the, the trip. Uh, it's been around for a long time. They do well at GABF and other places. They had a great beer. on. Actually, they had a great series of beers on tap. They had their barrel-aged stouts, kind of in a flight that you could have, boom, right when you walked in the door. And one of them was a barrel-aged stout with raspberry in it, and that was the one that was award-winning, and it was phenomenal. I forget what it was called. It was... Uh, Sally's Choice or something like that, and that was really good. Was that your um, first time at, at Haymarket? No, oh, no, no, no. I've been there before. Okay. Um, but uh, it was a nice place to rally because it was right by the metro station, and so everybody kind of took the metro into the city to meet the bus there. So that's where the bus started. Um, our first stop was at um, Motor Row Brewing, which... Don't go. <laughs> I think that they're worth saving, and their lagers were pretty decent, but they're, they basically were a brewery that had two styles they were saying, you know, putting out there and saying, this is who we are, lagers and Belgian-style beers. Their, their lagers were pretty good. I had no complaints with those. Their Belgian-style beers were everywhere. Where except in Belgium. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what part of the planet they were on. Uh, but it was not where you wanted to be. Um, so that was our first stop. Our, oh, no. I mean, yeah. And that's part of the reason why we booked the trip the way we did. It's sort of like, all right, everybody's been to Revolution. Everyone's been to Half Acre. Blah, 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 blah. You know, we're, we're a brew club. We're trying to figure out new stuff. What's going on now? Um, and so Motoro was one of those places. Uh, the next stop was um, Mad Mouse, and it was a part of a, a restaurant called, oh, I forget what the restaurant part of it was called, um, but Mad Mouse is a really good one. That had uh, German style seemed to be their thing, uh, German ales, but uh, they were solid, and um, they actually talked about their beers intelligently, they, their system, they explained it perfectly, loved the tour. Love the food, great food there, good beer. Um, the next stop after that was uh, All Rise, which is uh, a Naked Reagan reference. Uh, I believe that was a Naked Reagan album. And so this is a full-on Chicago brew pub. I want to say they're in the same building 
as the Cobra Lounge. Yeah, they're really close to the, the Fulton Goose Island location, right? Yeah, they're not far at all. I, far saw, at all. I saw them while I was on the train to Beer Under Glass last summer. I was in there, and I was like, I've never heard of All Rise. Did I just see the big the big sign on the side of the, the building. I was like, well, another brewery. <laughs> never heard of it. Yeah. No, and, and then that one is definitely worth checking out. Their brewer, Sharp Guy, not all the styles are equally great, uh, but I didn't have a bad one. And the ones that hit the mark hit it well. So that's a place to check out for sure. Um, the last place we checked out was... I feel like I'm missing one. But anyway, I think the last one we checked out was Break Room. And uh, Break Room Brewing It's a nice facility, great food. The tour was nice, but we kind of got a little bit of what, I, what the club ended up feeling like was uh, bait and switch. Uh, where it was like, yeah, come on, we'll give you the tour and everything, and then it turned out there was a, ch- a charge for the tour, and they tacked it onto our food orders. And it's sort of like, okay, wait a minute, that's coming in the form of free free samples, and you gave us two, like, four-ounce free samples. So while I thought that the, the, you know, the ambiance of the place was nice, the food was great, the beer was good, it was kind of eh, in terms of the experience. And, you know, everybody's going to have a different experience, so I don't want to take that away from anyone. Um, but that was the last stop, and then after that we were kind of on our own devices, and off we went. I love Break Room. I thought, I thought their beers are excellent. <clears throat> the food, like you said, was really good. But uh, I think the bar is just gorgeous. They, they obviously built it themselves. Did you get to see like through the the window into the building next door? How like they have that like wood shop and everything? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they gave us the the you know bottom up tour. So yeah, they were on. They did some TV show. Uh, they were like on the first episode of this Discovery show called like Beer, like Bars or something like that. I don't know. It's something something to do with like building bars for like all these different. Uh, uh, you know, breweries. Oh, yeah, they did, like, Hopcat, didn't they? They had some sort of a dispute with Hopcat because yeah. they were they were supposed to have uh, work, been working on, I think it was, like, the Detroit uh, Hopcat location. Is isn't there is there a Detroit yep. one, Chris? Yep. Yeah, so I think there was yep. something, some sort of a dispute about that location. They were supposed to do some work on that, and instead they were, I don't know, there's some sort of delay because they were doing other projects or something like that. I can't remember the details, but I remember that coming up. Rumor mill has it there is going to be a Hopcat Kalamazoo. I heard oh, about yeah, that. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Kazoo, baby. Yeah. The more, the more Hopcats, the better, in my opinion. Yeah, they're, they're nice. <laughs> I, I would not refuse one. <laughs> Actually, I'll be right back in a second. Hold on. Things there's crack fries everywhere. Those are so good. <laughs> um, yeah, I was mentioning uh, to you a while back, Chris. There was. Uh, have you heard anything about the KBS release from Founders yet? No, you mentioned that you were going to come try to come up for that possibly if it works out okay. I'd like, no, yeah, I'd no. like to. Um, buddy of mine about and I have been talking about it possibly because they did a cool release for it last year. So I'm hoping they do something similar again. But I reached out to Founders and they were like, "Yeah, nothing. We can't say anything yet." Keep an eye out on our, you know, uh, web page, web stuff, and yeah. Facebook and all that crap. So that's that's like three Floyds and Dark Lord Day. I think they're edging towards a date now because they just, re- you know, started tweeting about it. Right. Or no, they started tweeting about Behemoth. I'm sorry, Behemoth. Yeah. Behemoth. Yeah. Yeah. Behemoth, Bahamut, the, potato, the potato. Dark Lord Day tickets are usually on sale around St. Patrick's Day. Uh, and then Dark Lord Day is usually the following month because it almost always lands on my birthday weekend. Yeah. And then uh, KBS was in March last year, and now they're doing April this year. But they just didn't say a date yet. But if you go on their calendar, it says it's coming out in April. You know what's weird is that I've become a backwoods bastard convert over KBS. Yeah. And I don't know when that happened. That's most people are doing that. Uh, I'm like that. Um, if you know Doug Nolan on here is like that. Mm-hmm. He uh, he's big pro backwards bastard over KBS mostly because of the 
the hype <laughs> and the difficulty of getting KBS. Well, there's um, some of that. But it's but not, yeah, it's not just all of that. No, I was going to say, because you can sit on KBS for about a year and get something out of it. You can sit on Backwoods Bastard longer than that and get a lot more out of it, and dear God, it's cheaper, it's easier to get, right, yeah. it's delicious. I mean, and it, yeah. But, you know, I think the palate's <laughs> just trend towards that, you know, coffee, chocolate thing. You so know, that's cool. I, I'm afraid I'm starting to become a beer stop, and I need to quit being like this. So tonight... Um, the bar we were at has a pretty good beer selection. Diverse, I would say. It's not a craft beer haven, but they've got everything from, you know, a Bavarian, I forget what the name of the beer, I don't have my phone down here, the beer that I took a picture of that they have all the way to local stuff, you know, in Michigan and stuff. And I had a, um, I had a beer by, uh, I can't remember the brewery off the top of my head. Um, they do the Fresh Squeezed. No, it wasn't Deschutes. Deschutes is Fresh Maybe. Squeezed. Yeah, I don't know oh. if it's just good though, but it was something maybe it was something along those lines. I don't remember what it was. Anyways. Is that or it's like Great Divide or No, it was like the shoots or something. I can't remember the beer. I'm gonna have to look it up here in a second. But anyways, I go back down to get another beer and I'm like, Oh, I didn't even see these taps over here and I'm looking I'm like, Oh, they have plead the fifth. And then I walked all the way down and I'm like, Oh, I didn't see these taps at the other end and they've got hop slam on tap. Mm -hmm. hop slam. So I'm like, Okay, I got two great beers. Go ahead, go answer it. Uh, no, I got it. So, oh, left the door open. The refrigerator alarm. alarm. Yeah. And so I was like, all right. So I'm like, I'm gonna go with a plead to fifth. I just had a a hoppy beer. I'm gonna switch off. I like I like switching off from hoppy to to dark roastier beers and go back and forth because it kind of cleans your palate off both. So yeah, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go plead to fifth. So I get that plead to fifth. The plead to fifth is so like, I mean, it's a dark beer, but then the head is like so royally dark too. It's not like a lighter head color. It just looks badass. And so I go upstairs. And there's this guy that, you know, I've only been with this company. This is my fourth week. And I go by this guy that I haven't really, I, I, I rubbed him the wrong way one day. And he, he's been an okay guy, but he called me out on something IT-wise. And I was like, wow, that's, that doesn't happen very often. And I'm kind of, you know, I don't know how to take it. So I was kind of like put off by him. And I walk upstairs and he looks at me and goes, good, you're drinking a dark beer. None of these other Germans will drink the dark stuff. And I'm like, yeah. And I go, so they got plead to fifth down there. I got to hit that. And he's like, and he's like, yeah, but did you see? And he points at his glass. He goes, they got breakfast stout. And I'm thinking, right off the bat, I'm like, dude. And so I look at him and I go, yeah, but you can get that. Every, you can get that more frequently. Plead to fifths here and gone. Yeah. You know, breakfast stout's yeah. available more. And he goes, yeah, but this is on tap. And I was like, I was like, okay, I, you know, all right. I see your point, but I still, I will hit. You're right. I will hit. I will hit breakfast out if I want something dark. But if plead to fifths around, I'm going to hit that until it's gone because it's going to be gone here in another couple of weeks and won't yep. be available. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I was being beer snobby, kind of talking to him at first. I was like, eh. maybe we, we hit it off after that and talked a little bit, and then I realized that he knew a little bit about craft beer. But then I said stone at one point, and he was just kind of like stone, like who stone and. You know, I was like, all right. I, he he's one of the he's one of the typical guys here in Michigan that are hardcore Michigan guys, but. You know, if I go three Floyds, they're like, who? You know, like, uh -huh. they, have yeah. border, they have borders, you know, and they don't actually go outside those at all. <laughs> that, that's the Michigan upside downside right there. Right. <laughs> you run into that sometimes, unfortunately. They're just yeah. they're real. And it's great that they're like that, but yeah, I think you need to, you know, sometimes when somebody drinks something, they're like, oh, this is awesome. And then I drink it, and I'm like, eh, it's not bad, but, uh, you know, you need to get out and experience some other beers because it, it's not that good. Yeah, and that's when people start saying why. That's when I'm like, okay, that's downside. <laughs> that's yeah. where your downside is right there. Right. I mean, it's just I hate. I guess a good analogy is if you want to be pro. I guess this is maybe a bad analogy, but pro American buy Ford, GM stuff. But you know, experience some other cars. Buy a Nissan once in a while, or buy a, a Honda or, or Toyota. Or, yeah. Yeah. Just I know that's a little bit different because we're talking outside the United States a little bit, but same type of thing. You know, buy another product and see what else. You may not like it, and that's great. You know, then come back to the the other stuff. But you yeah, know, experience yeah, but, it a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Don't pitch about it if you've never done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, Mike, how much uh, longer are you out there in Seattle? Um, actually, I have a day off tomorrow, and I'm going skiing. Um, nice. Which I'm, which I'm excited about, and then I fly back to Boston on Friday. Cool. Nice. Where are you going skiing at? I used to live out there. Oh, um, so I'm going to Crystal. 
Crystal, okay. Which, uh, yeah, I've never been. I've never been skiing in Washington before, so it seemed as good a as good a place as any, and also easily accessible from Seattle, where I'm at right now. So um, I'd scope it out. And actually, tonight they're supposed to get like a foot of snow, so I'm, I'm hoping I'm uh, I don't encounter too much trouble getting there in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it could be rough. Yeah, yeah, the the drive that I remember. So I've been out in Colorado, not in the winter time, and when I was a little. The thing that I was blown away with, um, obviously you're in Boston, um, in Michigan here, you don't get as much snow as they get in the Cascade Mountains at times, and you'll be driving down the highway, interstate, and you have this wall of snow that has been carved out over the season. That it's almost like you're in a tunnel without a top because the walls are so high. You got you got like mountain on one side, and then you've got this, you know. 15 foot high thing of like carved out snow on the other side. You're just like, wow, it blows your mind on how much. And then they can, they, a lot, they did back when I was there in the 90s, they uh, they allowed chains, people, cars to wear, have chains on their tires. So that's different to see cars with chains on their tires. They don't allow that here in, in, in Michigan. Um, and yeah, then they should <laughs> at times. Yeah, and at Crystal, I think Crystal's where I went. That's where I dislocated the shoulder actually and uh, skiing down the hill. But from my point of view, is I don't think, I mean, it's it's mountain skiing, so it's pretty cool. But you're not going to have any of the kind of stuff you have in Colorado, where you have these trails that go off and linger on forever. You know, you got kind of the straight straight shot down the mountain type stuff, where you just you come down and swish down between trails. But for the most part, it's just a straight from the top down to the 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 shanty or the lodge down at the bottom. Yeah. You don't have all these. It should, from what I've heard from other people is in Colorado, sometimes you'll ski down and you'll ski tr- almost downhill trails like off and you're off kind of off the beaten path and come back to the lodge. And it, yeah. Crystal wasn't like that. It was more of an up and down, like straight up the hill type thing. And it's steep. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I mean, it'll be good for a, it'll be good for a day. I mean, I'm, I'm doing it for a day and then I'm, and then I'm flying back out Friday. So I think it'll be good. If I, I know what you're saying though. And, and, you know, I did some, a little bit of research and, as far as where <clears throat> where I wanted to go, because I knew I would have a, a free day out here, and mm-hmm. I was like, if I wanted to do anything that's that's gnarly, like you got to go pretty far north to like the border, Vancouver, um, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and then and then it gets a little a little wild, but that was more more time and effort that I was willing to expend, so I felt like this was a good good little diversion for a day. So I think you'll have was- a you'll have a blast. I mean, I'm not a big I I I grew up learning how to cross country ski, and I think that's what made my transition to downhill kind of easier because yeah. they you're all locked in and stuff and so I wasn't a good skier Me but too. yeah but it, it it was easy to do it, it it was a good time you know you went out other than me messing my shoulder up but uh it was that was because I was shut off for a chick back in the day <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. But, yeah, it was good, it's a good time up there I remember going up there and it, you couldn't even see the top of the mountain because it was snowing and it was foggy and you're up in the, I mean you're pretty high up there I mean you're yeah. up in the and the thing, the only other thing I would say to do if you ever go out there again is um, climb up uh, Rainier, go up to the top where you can drive to the top of Paradise, and then climb up as far as you can. That's actually a good little. You don't have to actually invest in anything. Just climb up as far as you can, follow the trail up until it gets into the glacier, and it's kind of cool to do that. If you get it on the right day where the clouds are hanging low, you'll actually climb through the clouds and get above them, and then you see just the tops of some mountains peeking through, and it's it's just awesomely wicked. That's cool. Yeah, that's mm. cool. That's one. You know, one thing I was talking earlier to to Mike about, you know, what the weather was like and, and what I've been doing here so far. And, and I actually I went for I went for a run yesterday morning, and um, it was kind of cold. It was like you know high 30s, low 40s at like seven seven thirty in the morning. Mm. Um, but it was clear yesterday, like which is unusual for this time of year for it to be that clear. And I was just running along the water, and and I. I went out and I went, turned around and came back and as I'm coming back, like the sky is just cleared up and I see Mount Rainier like the whole way back on the run. I'm like, this is it's incredible. Like, the and it's weird because it's just like this. It's like a wart, you know, like out in the middle of nowhere. It's just like yeah, you like, see the mountains like all, and all of a sudden there's this wart. Right? It's like Mount all by here. itself. It's like this yeah. gigantic peak that you see out there. It's I, it's really I, neat. It I I I I hate to say this because I've got I've got a really good friend from like grade school that lives out uh, in the south south uh, east of Tacoma. I hate to say this, but I kind of 
they always talk about this. I kind of want to see the day that Rainier blows because it'll be it'll be brutally <laughs> awesome to watch. But I know there's gonna be a lot of deaths. <laughs> so, so oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's going. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I vaguely <laughs> remember St. Helens going up. You know, I was like yeah. ten years old, but if they say if Rainier goes, it's like it's like. Tacoma's going to not even exist. It's just going to slide right. All that stuff will slide right into the Puget Sound and right through Tacoma. So I hate to say that, but, yeah, that'd be kind of, you know, we're always kind of those people that like natural disasters. Watch the hurricane. Watch the, the blizzard hit somewhere else. You don't want it to happen to you, but, but anyway. <laughs> oh, man. Right. Well, it's uh, past nine, so I'll, if you guys want to continue talking, we can you can stay on afterwards. I'm going to sign off in a little bit, but let's figure out what we're going to do next week. Um I got I got a lot of here on the on the wheel. We still got the wild card collaboration, uh, anything local. Strange ingredient, milk stout, brown ale, corked and caged, thirteen percent or higher. Uh, Goza, Saison, uh, sours, coffee beer, cider, dry hopped, uh, lawnmower beer, which is five percent or lower. Kolsch beer with pecans. <laughs> That's oh. random and specific. <laughs> Whoa, that's still on there? We yeah. did that one. We never what, got it. What was, that, what was that one? I didn't beer hear with pecan. Oh, wow. I think uh, we did that one. I just a beer you hate? Uh, barley wine. never one. No. And uh, the white whale. Ah, uh, the white whale. Great list. That's a great list. Yes. I agree. I, I'm gonna, I don't think we got to add anything unless you guys feel strongly about anything there. Brandon's not here, so just roll it quick. <laughs> Roll it and go. He'll put some malt liquor shit on there or something. Like <laughs> All right, it's should be spinning in a second here. Spin, go. Is it going? Is it going? No, we're back it's to the main going. screen. Uh, we see oh, icons. The app crashed. Yeah, that's fun. Maddie! What did you say? Maddie! <laughs> oh, let's see. Come on, it's thinking. All right. Fucking iPad is gone. Did you say fucking iPad? Yeah. <laughs> I, <hate that. laughs> I had an iPhone at my new work, and that lasted two weeks. Uh, oh. We are on. Don't talk, Dan. Let it go back to Mike. I see you. Dan, stop talking. Belgian. I saw Belgian. Belgian. Oh, Belgian came up and they spun it again. All right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. And we wild card. card. Wild we, always, card. we always get the wild card. Let's do this again. Yeah, do it again. Third right, time's the charm. All right, here we go. Here we go. Again. Let's go. Spin, spin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a drum roll going. Uh, what Cider. Are we doing? Oh. Cider. Cider. Star cut. <laughs> 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 Those are going to be sent here, too, I think. Do we want to do cider? Do we feel no. spin it again? Let's All right. Be, it's it's on the list. List. Take, take it off the wheel and spin it again. I'm not taking I'm pretty it. much no, it'll cider be, right now. It'll it's be like good a for summertime. Tuscany cider. All right. All right. It'll be good for summertime. What do we got here? White, White whale. whale. White whale. Oh, really? Yeah. Good. Wow. That could Let's be epic. Busting some stuff out of the closet. Mm. I like busting stuff out of the closet. I don't know what white whale I'm gonna. So a white a white whale is the big one, huh? Yes, right. Can't do any. I can't do any like uh, humpbacks or anything like that, can I? No. No. <laughs> no orcas. I don't know. Though. It could be someone else's definition of a white whale. Maybe a, a humpback for you. Like but... my like my nine year old daughters. Like that'd be like Bud or something. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is one person's white whale is another person's waxing the dolphin? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. I, I like that he said that. I'm going to I'm gonna take that because I, I don't know if I have any white whales. I got maybe one or two, and that's it. Go for it. Just do what you can. <sighs> I did. Right, Murdered guys. Out Stout would be one of the white, white whales, so I don't Ooh, know. Ooh, that's a good one. I'd be... F- I wouldn't be able to make it to the show. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it, guys. Mike, uh, have fun skiing tomorrow, man. Will do. Good to see you all. Take Thanks. care. Good to see you too, man. Later. Have fun. Yeah.